start record button. Yo, what's up guys? New video in Chronicles. And we have the update with Soleta, but with Soleta, a lot more other stuff also came. So I'm going to talk you through the whole update. What is there? You might miss a few things out there. Also, should you switch to Soleta, looking at the skill sets, looking at the events that are coming for the anniversary later. There's a whole bunch of kind of stuff to this patch right now. So I wrote down most of the things that are here right now and just going through it that way. But before we get into the video, I would like to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is the Huawei App Gallery. With the Huawei App Gallery, you can install your games or any other software and you can get nice discounts on all of them. So in the case for Summoners War Chronicles, we can search for Summoners War Chronicles. Once you see it over there, you can open the game from that and you can see the current campaigns that they're running. How do you get all of this? Well, simply you have to download the Huawei App Gallery, which is in the link down below. Afterwards, you install the HMS core, which you will create an account on, and then you select the region of any of the European countries. Once that is selected, you go for the Summoners War Chronicles, you install Summoners War Chronicles, and right away at the Summoners War Chronicles page, you also see what kind of campaigns they have running. Currently, we have this campaign running where you can have a 40% off every day. So how does that exactly work? Well, you can claim coupons and these coupons are used towards a certain value and then you can get that certain discount. So if you buy a uh, pack that's over 100 bucks or 100 euros in this case, we can have that coupon that has 22%. So in here, I can claim all of these coupons and you can go into my coupons and you can see all of them. And oh, there's actually a limit of how many times I can claim them. Good to know, good to know. So definitely you can claim them a whole bunch of times and then you can also check like, okay, which ones are the ones that I would like to claim. Highly recommend it's also joining their Discord because if you have any problems with any of your purchases or anything related to the Huawei App Gallery, you can ask them in their Discord and they're very friendly to help you out with that. So how would that look like when we go into the game? Well, as you can see, I have the game running here on my phone. If I'm not mistaken, you can do this on emulators as well, installing the Huawei App Gallery over there. But in this case, I have it on my phone. There are a whole bunch of packs, but I'm actually looking for a pack right now that has that 100 bucks, so I can show the example of the 100 bucks. So we have one over here. This pack is 120. If we go for the discount on this, if we want to purchase it, we can see, okay, we have our purchasing methods on the right, but we can also see the coupon that we have on the left, which my head is slightly hovering on there. If we click on it, it also shows what kind of coupons I still have left. And you have to double check that if it's using the right, that is the most value for what you're purchasing at that moment, because it doesn't always select the most value that you have at that moment. And in this way, I have a very nice discount of 22 euros for my purchase. Once I hit the payment method, it will go through the system of paying. And once you've done all of that, you can successfully purchase this back very easily with a very nice discount. So once again, I want to thank the Huawei App Gallery for sponsoring this video and let's get into the video. So first of all, we have the Illusion Guardian where you can get some of the um, SD units right now. So secret dungeon units. I did try a few, a few of those waves. They actually start to get somewhat difficult around this. You are free of entering this all the time. So that is pretty chill. Can you actually, uh, you have to clear that at least one time and have uh, overpowered it. Okay, I guess. So... Yeah, with that, the, these dungeons are pretty uh, chill to do. It just gives you a whole bunch of those, which is just pretty nice in general. And if I'm not mistaken, this will rotate which unit it is every time. So in this case, definitely bring a heal blocker against this thing. Somewhat annoying, but pretty nice as well. We have one event that's going on right now, but I'll talk more about events later when I also talk about the events that are to come starting tomorrow, because the main events actually start tomorrow. Um, we also have a change to energy and energy is restored uh, with five or, or one energy every five minutes and Mahalia is like flattering like run on my freaking screen. But instead of seven minutes, it is five minutes right now. So you have a lot more energy to spend and I think the retakes are still the same price. Yeah. Uh, battlefields, I think, are made more stupid in certain way. Because with Battlefields, we have the uptime of Battlefields is a lot longer. You don't actually have downtime in Battlefields right now. But you have this power limit stuff. So I will be lowered down to 350k power. Which, in a sense, is not really an issue too much. But the big issue is I am hero rank. Because of hero rank, I will be placed against people with way lower ranks. I will get lower points. And I will have a wedge matchmaking while also uh, not being able to carry because I have lower power. There are days or moments in the day or something like that where the power limit is 1 mil and we're not going to overtake 1 mil. But yeah, that is pretty interesting. I know, I, I really don't know like 
how I feel about this. I feel like it's more annoying than doing any good. Because in the end, I stopped, like the moment I got the hero rank, I already stopped doing battlefields because all of your matches are simply bound to lose because you are placed with a bunch of very low end people against all mid tier people and you're kind of bound to lose that. So I'm not really liking that kind of stuff. And we have a few changes to guild stuff. And the first one, we actually would have to go to the guild of four. And if you see over here right now, there's one thing that is added, which is the guild profession research, which is currently level zero. And if we go to this one over here, um, we build it uh, so far. Only two people did it so far. And you can uh, get this thing built. And what it does is it uh, discounts your, um, what's it called? Profession cost discount, which is pretty interesting. So there is a daily limit to how many times you can actually craft things with the discount. But that discount is pretty insane. Like if you look at the numbers, you can get a 20% discount for your first 300 crafts. Is 300 like an insane amount? Not really, but over time it does pretty much stack up to a decent amount. So how do you get those? Well, you have to get these carpenter hammers and carpenter hammers is one of the new things that you can get from crafting, procession or processing, sorry, not procession, processing. And then this one, which is, it just costs a little bit. It's like a daily limit. And where you can see at some point, like if you have a higher of this, you will also go for like the more, um, what's it called? You, you just get those cheaper, but you have a limit of how many things you can craft at that moment. So that is pretty something interesting for the guild to work towards. And if I'm not mistaken, they are going to add more and more things for the guild that you can actually build together and get useful stuff in here, which is pretty nice. And they already started adding like a bunch more merchants in here, which is pretty useful because the fishing merchant kind of sells a lot of stuff right now, which it didn't in the past. We also have one more guild thing, which is the uh, guild infinite rate. And this one is pretty funny, actually. Guild infinite rate is pretty much one of those dungeons you just go through a whole bunch of waves and they get stronger and stronger over time. And with that, you just get like a bunch of rewards. So the interesting thing for rewards is that you get like the double months here for the or like the double month pieces for the guild rewards. I think this is a weekly base as well. And there's like a few more rewards to it than just this. Like, yeah, this one. So for your individual rank best score, you also get illusion mirrors and illusion mirrors is something that is pretty useful as well. So definitely you do want to get like a pretty decent rank and it's just getting like the you would have to get an S minus rank for the max amount of illusion mirrors. This is pretty difficult though. Like, trust me, this is not that easy to get, but you will get there at some point probably. So at least aim for like getting three, like the A minus, I think that's somewhat doable for most people. If you're somewhat more to the higher end, but illusion mirrors are pretty nice. And I'll show you later how that is, why that is. Another super nice thing, which you might have not noticed yet is if you go to books, you have this wisdom of fire, water, wind, and light and dark. What this is, is that you can make your uh, book level of one unit or multiple units a little bit higher. So in the case of dark, it's depending on like how many dark units that you summon. But I used 140 points in this, which make my Lynette from level 5 book to level 12 book, which is pretty interesting. And if you, you, you can use that separately for every element. And so in this case, I chose Lynette over here. I chose Ikasha over there. I chose this one, uh, Athna, but Athna is already pretty much like was a little bit closer to mech. So I still have like 97 points left. You can also say if you want to say like, hey, I actually got a book recently or something like that. You can also read uh, do that for 500k gold. But with that, you can say like, OK, uh, I use Athna a lot. I, in this case, I said I use uh, Garrow a lot. I actually maxed out Garrow fully with like 180. And then I still have 20 left, so I can do one more level, either in Ariel or NFL. Those are most used for me in this um, quadrant of elements. And then for fire, I think I maxed out Juno. And then afterwards, I did a little bit on Tessario. So that is pretty interesting. And just use those on the units you use most. If you use a lot of Argon for like PvE kind of stuff, it's pretty useful to get that crit rate in. And then you can also have a crit rate set that's based on that crit rate that Argon actually has at a max book because every time that you added a book level right now you are like oh then i can actually kind of lower my runes and lower my runes and it's kind of annoying with this you can just say like oh i'll just have max Argon and i'll just work with that then it's super chill so definitely an update thing that i do really like 
Then we also have a bunch of things with the... So then we also have a new thing for outfits. And with outfits, we have equipment overlay. And equipment overlay is weapons rather than your... Uh, what's it called? Before you only did the outfits, but now you also have weapons. And for those, you can also get like a whole bunch of pretty interesting things. And instead of using the what we normally use to the uh, balls of wool kind of things, we have to use the illusion mirrors right now. So those are the illusion mirrors that I talked about that you get from the infinity, uh, like the infinity stage in raids or the guild raid infinity stage, that thing, yes. You can get those illusion mirrors and you can start crafting those. Like some cost more than other and then you all have like the other side materials and all of that kind of good stuff. You can also get illusion mirrors, if I'm not mistaken, from... Yeah, if you go from this NPC, that's actually this NPC. And you can buy it over here. So you have a summoner weekly buy. Wait, that's pretty interesting as well, because this is a summoner weekly buy. I didn't notice that yet, because I already bought them on my Orbia. But that is the first thing about the shop that's actually a character count. Or like a character weekly buy. So technically, you can buy 20 every week. So that actually, yeah, because you have to use them on different characters, but buying 20 will get you to a certain point where you can get a lot of these things in already right away. Another interesting thing is if you were to say like, hey, I have a lot of outfits on my Orbia or anything like that, you can transfer those uh, outfits except the pay to win outfits, like the outfits that you paid like the Rahild for or anything like that. Or can you get, get them worth Rahild? Now, with like the cash shop thing that you, you could get some of these um, things, you cannot transfer those, but the other ones you can transfer. It is somewhat expensive to transfer them, though, because the transferring process works as following. If you, you first have to go for the crafting thing that is through processing where you can buy these scissors. And these scissors are somewhat expensive on the craft of like 400k per, but you need to have four scissors to transfer a full set. And... That is somewhat expensive because you have to go into each individual item. You have to click disassemble. It will show you, okay, you get the materials back. And I think it costs you a little bit of a fee as well. So it does cost you a decent amount to transfer all of those things. So definitely, I would say transfer the things that if you want to start transfer things, transfer the things that probably cost like the flame hearts and that kind of stuff. Those are the more difficult to get. Sure, the ones with the barns of wolves, they're also like a little bit more difficult to get. But the issue is also if you go for a higher tier of transferring gear, kind of the, like the outfit stuff, it will cost like two, three, maybe even four. I think the highest I've seen three, but three scissors to actually swap that out. So that is getting expensive to a certain extent, like because I pretty much finished all outfits on Orbia. If I want to switch all of those outfits to this one right now, it will be somewhat expensive and then let's say Orbia does get a buff I would also have to like maybe start want to start playing Orbia again I don't know so the main thing that is annoying to get is these useful barns I would say like all of the other stuff you kind of get throughout playing like decent amount like maybe some of those dungeons you farm more than others like the Rodals one I didn't really farm for example so that I would have to maybe get back but you also have like these materials they're pretty hard to come by because it just takes a while to get all of those materials in. So for that, you could decide like, hey, I do want to transfer those. Whereas you maybe not want to transfer the other things which are easier to get. But that's totally up to you. It's also the question, do you actually want to transfer stuff and fully go for Orbia right away or not? In this case, like I could transfer all of these. But I could also just buy the whole separate thing again. Because it's 300 per, but I have enough material or close to. No, I don't even have enough material. I would need more of those. But those are relatively easy to get now as well. So that is just something I would have to decide. Like, okay, do I want to transfer all of that stuff? Or do I actually want to keep all of that stuff? And then, I don't know yet. That, that's something that I'm definitely not sure about yet. Uh, then we also have a thing for Seal. And for Seal is a, a three-man dungeon right now. I did already clear Seal. So I will insert the clip of me clearing Seal. It is a lot easier right now. We cleared it way faster. And that's pretty nice. You can clear it like close to a minute. Super chill. Very nice. Wait, we just did a run again. And you know what the point is where he does all of the jumps? If you do enough damage, you can clear it before he goes into the state of the invis. So it's just the jumps. We did a 1 minute 17. That's insane. 
This is so much more chill right now. Wow, that's a very good update for this, definitely. The thing that is made easier is Galagos, and that's mainly the monster. Like, normally you had, like, the energy of a monster that was depleting the moment you did a stage. Currently, if you fail a stage, it doesn't deplete any uh, of your energy of the monster. And also, if you win the stage, it depletes a little bit less. So, that is something that is a lot chill, more chill for people to clear Galagos. Like Galagos, you only have to clear it once a month right now. But I think for the people that maybe don't have that many monsters or for Kinas that it's more difficult to get all of your monsters in, it's a lot easier as well. So then looking at the events that we currently have. So we have a bunch of events that they mentioned all the way at the bottom of this thing. They said like, okay, we have a whole bunch of events coming up for the first anniversary. Let's look at those. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's in there. Uh, this is the one. So we get a... Selection ticket, okay, LD scroll, nice. So we get a whole bunch of good stuff. So definitely you, between like the 11th of August, you do want to log in. Like even if you're not playing that actively, you probably do want to log in every so often. And that just makes things, yeah, you're just going to get a lot of stuff. Like as you can see here, you can get like 4.2k energy, 15k crystals. If I'm not mistaken, you're getting like, multiple light and dark scrolls you're getting like a lot of like specific special scrolls you definitely do want to log in for all of those events that's definitely a thing that i would recommend and then of course we also have soleta and for soleta i will go over the uh, i already went over all of the skills in a different clip so i'll be showing that clip we'll record for skills so gonna look at all of um soleta skills in the background i'm leveling her right now so Let's check that out. So we start off with Wind. Wind, we have the skill one, which she has like the Fletch thing. And the moment she has Fletch, which is getting by or tearing by and one of the other skills, she gets like extra stuff going on. So more than seven meters away. Okay. And she does extra skills. So this skill is applies Fletch to herself. Like as mentioned, she will get Fletch unremovable and she will go for poison and block beneficial effect in a radius. Which isn't too bad, but 3 seconds is pretty short. And what is the cool time on this? It's 20 seconds. Keep in mind that with her passive, she has like the cool time reductions kind of stuff, which is pretty nice. We also have uh, Gate of Arrows, which is the other skill. Okay, that gives a lot of stuff. So that's a pretty decent one for stacking debuffs, I guess, because this is a multi hitty thing and then randomly applies those things. So if you want to have debuffs for your Argon, I guess this will be the skill to go. Uh, if you want to get this skill, I first have to get level 70. Okay, makes sense. Third skill is that retreat shot, and then if there is a dot, also give the block harmful effects. And then it also sleeps. So that's definitely not bad to have like a sleep built in that skill. That's, that's actually definitely not bad. And skill one is also just damage up when having a fletch, okay? So ultimate also gives Fletch if the target has then also so every time that there is a dot on it you will have the block beneficial effects and you push with this skill which definitely not bad. Let's look at uh, let's go for normal elements first. So we have the ice one. Ice one is if the caster is fire you do extra damage and you have weak point. Oh yeah so the the ice one is based on weak point as far as I know. So you still have fletch, but weak point is mainly the thing where you don't necessarily crit, but you hit um, with your based on your position or something like that. So, okay. In this case, we have, okay, shoots two additional arrows. Oh, wait, let's start with this skill. Yeah, shoots two additional arrows. You go for that attack speed. So this one is happily based on attack speed. It's somewhat interesting because attack speed is, I would say, um, not possible to gain for the summoner in the stats. Which is a little bit interesting, but I think it's still pretty good. So we have a freeze at... Is it an AoE radius to freeze? Because it is an AoE thing. I guess it can freeze multiple units. It's only showing one frozen unit in here right now. Uh, movement speed down, damage down, not bad. Let's see a this skill, is this skill any better? That's a pretty big AoE. Oh, that's one of those AoEs that stay. And then also gives the target has movement speed down for three and a half seconds. Okay, but what's the AoE doing? Okay, with each hit, fly. okay, movement speed down applying, I guess. Not too bad, not too bad, not too crazy good. This one is pretty short ranged. 
but it is pretty decent, I guess. Which also gives like the knockdown and that kind of stuff. Okay. Then we go for fire. I might actually, while selecting fire, die in the background. Well, wait, we didn't check the ultimate yet. Ultimate is pretty much the same, but it gives you attack speed up in this case. Okay, fair enough. We have for this one is also Fletch. And when the target with 50%... Okay, you destroy HP on this one. So there's a built-in destroy, which is very nice. The cleave also has that. And because of that, you don't always need like a destroy damage dealer with you. In the case of Orbia, if you kind of want to fight those long drawn out fights, you kind of need to have at least one unit on destroy. So that could be your Juno, that could be one of your warriors or actual damage dealers, but you always need that one destroy unit in there for long drawn out fights. Whereas a cleave, for example, doesn't need that. And in this case, Soleta also doesn't need that, which is pretty nice. So we have Fletch and then Destroy by 30%. I think that's a good amount. And then if we... Okay, so if you destroyed a lot of HP already... Wow, this is very strong on the Destroy, I would say. So in this case, we have a skill. We have Fletch and then Death Down. So self-setup Death Down. It is just one, but it is pretty decent, I guess. And we have this skill, which is targets enemy max HP. Okay, fixed damage on target, me, target enemy max HP. I think the death down might be nice for setup, but this is definitely not a bad skill as well. Skill acceleration and knockback. That's pretty nice. Wow. And then also knockback and stun. Damn. That's, that's a very CC heavy uh, skill for that fire one. That's definitely a not bad skill. But then most of the time, light and dark is whatever is used in PvP the most. So this is going to be the two most interesting ones, I guess. We have... Um, recover. Okay, so you have built-in recovery on the basic attack for lights. And ignore evasion damage. Okay, interesting, I guess. Uh, this is also recovery. Wow, so you have self-recovery on all of this kind of skills. Crit rest down, pretty interesting, I guess. Is that great? Hmm, not sure how strong crit rest down is. This attack ignores beneficial effects and mitigates uh, target temperature. Okay, I guess if it ignores beneficial effects, you can use this as a finisher against cleaves and that kind of stuff if they have endure. That's pretty decent. Repositions, uh, I didn't really look at the call times, but well, whatever. Okay, this one has the uh, crit damage up, and this also does more damage against that. Fix attack speed to 80%, replace attack speed off with attack up. Wow, okay, so this skill is... That's a pretty nasty skill, I would say. Not sure if I'm liking the short range uh, knockback, but this does have a lot of stuff with the uh, crit damage up and that kind of stuff. That's That's pretty nasty. And can we actually see here how much crit damage up is? Crit damage up to is 80. So technically, Solet only needs like 320 crit damage if you are planning to use this skill often. Interesting, interesting. And now we have even more crit damage up. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty nasty. And then this one is very nasty as well. The dark one actually decreases summoner cool times. But this is very nice to snipe out summoners and that kind of stuff. So all of her skills, if I'm not mistaken, pretty much have that, I don't know, just these two have that uh, decreased cool time, which is pretty nice. Unrevivable if it uh, defeats the tar- Ooh, Inrevivable on skill 1, wow, that's, that's actually pretty freaking strong, not gonna lie. I think Dark One is probably the one that's going to be banned in PvP, correct me if I'm wrong. Oblivion on the S2, building Oblivion on that unit, wow. Damn, Oblivion is very strong as well. And then we have a Root. Root is also pretty freaking strong. And Attack Up. Nice, nice. Dark is definitely the one that seems to be very powerful. Oblivion 20 seconds. Yeah. So yeah, there seems to be some quite interesting skills with this. If you combine that also with her passes where she has like the evasions um, and all of that kind of good stuff. I think she's pretty, pretty solid. So currently looking at the skills of Soleta, I haven't really looked too much at the skills of her at all. So these are all the typical ones, like mana increases, soul link changes, that kind of stuff. Soul link, definitely go for that one, of course. Can't fully do that. Revive, sure thing. I can get everything except a few levels into the elemental stuff. So 
Okay, then the passive. So what passive is this? Attack speed up and we have the mana increase. That's definitely useful. So attack speed up to ourselves. Okay. Attack speed on basic attack. Speed level ourselves. Decrease. Okay, not bad. And uh, this one we have damage dealt with a skill. Oh, with precision. Okay. Interesting. So this one actually does need precision. Increase precision and movement speed above certain HP thresholds. Not bad. Use the evasion gets, uh, yeah, that's the thing which is very nice. So the moment you evade, this unit is very good if you, or the, the, this character is just very good if you evade and that kind of stuff. Removes all harmful effects applied on herself when below a certain HP. Okay, that's that's pretty strong as well because, well, I guess you can still get Oblivion and that kind of stuff, but that is not like super low HP, but that's a decent amount of HP where you can still do stuff. Decrease cooldowns when evasion. That's also like she's very evasion based. If monster HP is below 50%, crit damage taken down 3 for 15 seconds. That's pretty good for the units as well. And this is the um, ignore lethal damage and soul protect, which is also very strong for passives. So, passive wise, she has a lot of good stuff going for her. That's definitely true. Um, yeah, and the individual skills, we will have to look at in a moment. Because those are different on each element. So I think I'll go over every element and then see what it goes from there. I've seen a little bit from it about the Korea server, but I haven't fully checked it yet. Oh, wait, I also... Do I have Dark already? Yeah, I can equip Dark right now, can't I? Oh, Dark is level 60. Well, let's get level 60 first. Well, we can already see the... No, let's get level 60 first and then we check uh, those skills. That. So if you're booting on Saleta, you can say like, nope, we completed that. You get all the rewards right away. You get level ups. It's pretty nice. And then, well, the thing is, you get more rewards than it probably costs you because you can claim everything afterwards. But, oh, wait, is my game, my game just bugged, I guess. Oh, halfway bugged. But, uh, yeah, if you want to gain some crystals... You should probably not do this, but to be honest, I think everyone will do this because it's just like, who the hell actually wants to go through the whole storyline for a day and a half again? I think everyone is just going to do this, right? Like even, it, it, it costs you a bit, but it's not that bad. And I think afterwards you can still do all of the, uh, all of these quests you can still do, so... There's a lot of stuff that you can still get crystals and stuff from, so I definitely recommend you to just skip through storyline. Like, if you can, why not? Yeah, so the, in the end, I forgot to do 6, but in the end, um, it costs you like about 5k-ish, but you also gain back a lot of stuff, and then afterwards you can do all of these quests, which I guess should give you back most of it as well. There are some good quests in here that give you a bunch of stuff for like multiple characters if you do it multiple times, so... For that part, it's actually not bad to redo some of those. It just takes you a little bit of time, but it's free stuff, right? So yeah, then it's finished. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, definitely do subscribe. I am planning to actually switch to Soleta because for me personally, I noticed that Orbia is kind of in the worst state right now where she's ever been in. I'm not 100% sure if I will start transferring all of the outfits. I think I will just level her. Probably do level her tomorrow, not the, don't level her today already. Because currently you can add the Florence buff, but you cannot have the hot time event buff. So I would wait for the hot time event buff for the weekend and then actually start leveling her. Um, I will definitely be first leveling her, then I think I will, will switch all of my accessories to her. From there I will see like, okay, do I want to start switching out like the weapon stuff that I have towards Soleta weapons? Because you can do that... Um, whatever it's called, that you can transfer the stats, or at least uh, like the lines and that kind of stuff over to the next one in the grades. So might do that at some point. And then afterwards, yeah, outfits, I think comes after that. So for me, I'm just going to try like, hey, do I like our play style? I'm not going to switch everything over right away. I'm first going to like play her through and see like, okay, do I like the play style? Do I think she's very strong? I heard from the Korean people, or at least from the Korean server, that these like this is the strongest character at the moment but then you could also say like they have announced the new character which is the assassin which is going to be a hard count on soleta would you not just wait for that one 
Well, I don't know. Like, to be honest, like every MMO that I played, I pretty much played an archer. So I played an archer back in like RuneScape, MapleStory, Ion, uh, Lunia, like all of those games. I always played the archer class. Even did like I was maining Ash at the start of League of Legends, like all of that kind of stuff. I always kind of went for the archer. So in this case, like the archer class is probably something that I would be more interested in than the mage class. So definitely we'll see if uh, this will... If this will awaken my, mm, how to say it, motivation to play a lot more Chronicles. Because as of recently, I haven't been playing too much Chronicles. I've been more just doing daily stuff, logging out and fishing all day. That's pretty much, uh, I've been there a lot. That, that's mainly what I've been doing. But let's see if that actually helps me to start playing this game a lot more, enjoying it a lot more. Because some of the updates that we had recently weren't that great. But I think they go in the right direction. It's just sometimes kind of hard to see and also for content making that a lot of the stuff that we have released is already released in korea so it's slightly less interesting for me to make content on but definitely let me know if you want to see more content guys thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one